we've talked about this a little bit, uh, yeah, as friends, but um, one of the things that I've done during this pandemic is I've actually gone back old school. I tell people it's really sort of sent me even back, you know, to a lot of publications and information that's not sort of mainstream functional medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I've really found out is that we don't detox right uh, these days, I don't think. For the most part, you know, I think we make it a little bit um, too superficial. You know, we'll talk about, okay, let's, you know, just get the liver going. And we can see that this is progressing too, because when you and I probably entered functional medicine, we just put everybody on liver cleanses, like gave them, you know, supplements and, you know, uh, shakes and things like that. Then we got sort of smart about this and said, okay, now we need binders. We need something to take it out. We got to get the bile going. We've got to get binders and we need this and that. But I think along the way, you know, we've even missed some of the really important ways to detox. And when we look at cellular detox, a big part of it is fats. And the interesting thing is to really look at our society and how we've gotten even away from fats, like even healthy individuals that, you know, we've sort of still been in this 1980s craze of low fat diet. And that, um, you know, we then have put into our diet a lot of processed rancid fats. Mm -hmm. um, and we're getting away from that, which is good. But when we look at this, it's really about that cellular wall and the cellular membrane, which is made up of fat. And then a lot of these fat soluble toxins that attach mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. And we talk about it accumulating in our fat cells, but it also accumulates in our cell membranes. And so we can actually use sauna and sweat and niacin and binders um, and things like that to actually get the cell to release and mm -hmm. get rid of the fats, which get rid of the toxins, which actually then can change that whole composition versus just sort of going up and cleaning by just going after the liver. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Halderman. I'm a former medical physician and author of The Thyroid Debacle. I'm now devoting my life to education, research, and biotech because I realize we need educated people to bring us cutting edge information, especially when we find ourselves with a diagnosis such as hypothyroidism. When I was practicing allopathic medicine, I myself became very sick, bedridden with what would be diagnosed as Lyme and mold infections. Along my health journey, I was also diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a condition I was told that could only be managed with medication. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is more than medication to help you. As you will learn through my powerful interviews with several functional medicine practitioners, there are tools that will help empower you to take charge of your health. Join me today as I interview leading doctors, naturopathic specialists to uncover the most useful health insights for you. This podcast has been launched in collaboration with Dr. Talks. Visit them today at drtalks.com backslash calendar to learn more about their upcoming summits. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Dr. Talks. I am your host, Dr. Kelly Halderman, and today we have a fabulous topic and a fabulous doctor joining us. Dr. Megan Kirschling is here. Welcome, Dr. Megan. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for having me. You're welcome. We are going to be talking about one of my absolute favorite topics, and that is detoxification. And we're going to be talking about it in regards to the thyroid, because again, our topic is thyroid health. So Dr. Megan, why don't we start by uh, talking about your practice and who you are and what you do? So I'm Dr. Megan Kirschling, and I work outside of Minneapolis in a town called Bloomington, Minnesota. Uh, I have a integrative health clinic where I work with a bunch of other integrative providers. And uh, my background is actually chiropractic and nurse practitioner. And so I've just sort of always had this love for natural health, looking at things at the big level, getting to the root cause. Uh, and I treat a lot of hormones, a lot of thyroid. We do a lot of detoxification. Uh, we obviously also do muscular skeletal. We really just connect the whole body here at the clinic that I work at, Wanagora Integrative Health. And just love this uh, sort of area and the Serena got out of traditional medicine. Uh, which is sort of the same story as probably everybody on this, uh, you know, summit is the fact that it just wasn't fulfilling. We were missing big, big parts of the picture. We weren't really truly helping patients and we were just putting one bandaid after another. And unfortunately too, as time goes on, 
these wounds and the bandages need to be a lot bigger because of the fact that there's a lot more coming at individuals. And so just really finding we didn't have the tools to help people in the traditional medicine world. And so have come over a long time ago to this side of medicine and just thoroughly really enjoy not only helping patients, but the education part of really putting it all together. One of them would definitely be heavy metals. And I think in the uh, category of heavy metals, there's really gonna be four major ones for the thyroid. Mercury, and it's interesting because mercury actually has an effect in a couple different ways. It also mimics iodine. And so the other conversation that I think a lot of people uh, sort of need to realize because it's so interesting on the physiological level is that a lot of times when we talk about what's toxic to the thyroid, it's because of the fact that it sort of mimics or is very similar to the nutrients that the thyroid needs to function properly. Mm -hmm. And those are gonna be things, especially like iodine and selenium. Mm -hmm. And so when we start to get some of these more toxic environmental chemicals and heavy metals in our body, we start to alter the effect then of how the nutrients will be able to play into both the cellular level of communication and function, but especially the thyroid. So heavy metal wise, mercury, um, aluminum, um, lead are the three big ones along with cadmium. Cadmium loves spongy tissue. And so we see a lot of times when people are exposed to cadmium, it'll actually accumulate both in the thyroid and then the prostate glands, another one that will really accumulate cadmium because of its sponginess. And so we then will see that heavy metals affect it both because they'll accumulate and because they interfere. And they also can lead to then autoimmunity because the immune system gets confused then by these foreign invaders in our body. People don't realize, you know, the flame retardants on your mattresses, like in your clothes, those have things um, that are uh, like PCDEs and um, PCBs, which are interesting enough, their backbone is either chlorine or bromine. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that's important is because chlorine and bromine, um, and then also fluoride, they interfere with uh, the thyroid because of iodine. And so when we are using environmentally, a lot of these chemicals that have a component that just interferes with the production and conversion of our thyroid hormones. So they have something in them called tr uh, triclosan, which actually interferes with the thyroid. And we've known this for years and your body absorbs it. So even though you feel like you're just putting it you know, on your hands, your body is absorbing it. And that's one of the reasons why they can be pretty toxic. EMFs, um, as we get exposed to more and more EMF and Wi-Fi, um, we've actually studied since the 1980s the effect of cellular devices on the thyroid. And that was when we weren't even in a very cellular world. Like maybe we had, you know, wireless phones. And we've known since then that they have an effect. And, you know, even research in the early 2000s showed that even 33 you know, hours a month, which is, you know, a little bit over an hour a day had really negative effects on the thyroid because it's very sensitive to radiation and changes in uh, that cellular energy around us. And so EMFs, antibacterial soaps and gluten, um, you know, obviously diet and gut plays a role with everything, but especially, you know, we know the link between gluten and thyroid. We've talked about this a little bit, uh, yeah, as friends, but um, one of the things that I've done during this pandemic is I've actually gone back old school. I tell people it's really sort of sent me even back, you know, to a lot of publications and information that's not sort of mainstream functional medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I've really found out is that we don't detox right uh, these days, I don't think. For the most part, you know, I think we make it a little bit... Um, too superficial, you know, we'll talk about, okay, let's, you know, just get the liver going. And we can see that this is progressing too, because when you and I probably entered functional medicine, we just put everybody on liver cleanses, like gave them, you know, supplements and, you know, uh, shakes and things like that. Then we got sort of smart about this and said, okay, now we need binders. We need something to take it out. We got to get the bile going. We've got to get binders and we need this and that. But I think along the way, you know, we've even missed some of the really important ways to detox. And when we look at cellular detox, a big part of it is fats. And the interesting thing is to really look at our society and how we've gotten even away from fats, like even healthy individuals that, you know, we've sort of still been in this 1980s craze of low fat diet. And that, um, you know, we then have put into our diet a lot of processed rancid fats. Mm -hmm. um, and we're getting away from that, which is good. 
But when we look at this, it's really about that cellular wall and the cellular membrane, which is made up of fat. And then a lot of these fat soluble toxins that attach mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. And we talk about it accumulating in our fat cells, but it also accumulates in our cell membranes. And so we can actually use sauna and sweat and niacin and binders um, and things like that to actually get the cell to release and mm-hmm. get rid of the fats, which get rid of the toxins, which actually then can change that whole composition versus just sort of going up and cleaning by just going after the liver. And this is um, Hubbard's work. And now it's um, Dr. Root's work, uh, you know, from the 1970s, late 1970s on. Uh, But with the niacin, you actually get this really cool effect that we never talk about, which you get this lipolysis, which is a release of fat after the flushing, but it has to be the short acting. It's got to be the flushing niacin. So the nicotinic acid? Would that be mm-hmm. okay? Okay. Yep. And it can't have any of the sustained release aspect of it. Right. So, and a lot of our supplements have gotten away from that because it's they uncomfortable. Have. Mm-hmm. Like it's not necessarily fun to flush. Um, you do get that itching, redness, burning. But the cool thing is, is that then a couple hours later, they've proven that what you're then doing is you're releasing the fat. And that's why like, it's one of the only supplements um, that we know that can actually raise HDL, your good cholesterol. Mm -hmm. For the longest time we've known it's really only exercise diet and uh, short acting niacin, but it's because of the fact that it has such a positive effect on your fat and fat cells and fat metabolism. So by taking it, you're then able to flush out and sort of mobilize the fat And then by then taking in the good fats, you can start to then replace this fat that's in your body that's connected to all of these toxins with the good fats that you're taking in and then bind it out because it's all got to come out through your gut. So you've got to have a healthy gut. The, I think the, you know, butyrate helps in a couple of different ways in the fact that it helps to be able to detox, but it also helps your gut be able to then get it out versus then again, what we're trying not to do is just recycle and make this an endless cycle of toxicity. And I do this a little bit individual for each person because of the fact that, you know, when you look at this, it's going to depend too on how toxic you are, like your overall vitality and what you can take. Um, I start people really slow on the short acting niacin. You usually want to wait somewhere between the two to three hour window before then you exercise or do some kind of lymphatic work, whether that's dry brushing, rebounding, um, you know, chi machine, something like that. Um, and then get into um, a sauna or if some people don't have sauna, infrared is best. Mm -hmm. Um, Hubbard used all dry sauna, but he put people in for about 45 minutes. With an infrared, you can be in from 10 to 20 and get great results. Mm -hmm. Um, But the infrared and, you know, low level laser, which is also great for, and red light, which is great for the thyroid, is fantastic to use too, because you're getting such an increase in cellular activity. And so then you usually want to put them into some time of sweating to pull out heavy metals and things like that about um, two and a half to three hours after they take the niacin. Uh, It's good during this time too, to be taking things that help with your bile because bile is what's going to push out that fat soluble through your gut. So that could be anything from Tuca to phosphatidylcholine. Uh, Quicksilver has a great uh, supplement called liver sauce that I love to use. Mm -hmm. And then you want to, about an hour after you come out of the sauna, 30 minutes to an hour after, take a binder. Uh, Some people, because I know we're getting into a big time frame, take the binder right after, that's fine. Um, And you're going to want to take the electrolytes during, like electrolytes during the sauna. Uh, And then the fat, you can really then take two, three hours afterwards. You can take it, you know, with dinner but you just wanna make sure to be putting in, you know, good fats, it can be flaxseed, chia seed, hemp. Um, you know, I love uh, C60 and using those oils. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, phosphatidylcholine is great for the actual cell membrane. So you wanna take like a um, plethora and a copious amounts of fats and oils. Push the fats with meals and take a digestive enzyme with ox bile. Um, either take smaller amounts of fat during the day so you're not putting a big load on the gallbladder or, um, you know, just make sure that uh, you're taking in more good fats with your meals and just take a digestive enzyme with ox bile, because that will help the bile to be able to actually then move, which is great because that then is going to detox as it goes down the gut. Um, and you're not going to have the side effects of pain and whatnot that can come from the gallbladder being overactive. 
So I think when it comes to the thyroid and just detoxification in general, the number one thing is you've got to make sure that you're moving your bowels right. And so I always tell people like, that's the number one thing, because that's going to be how we detox out these fat soluble toxins. So that's number one, first and foremost. Um, and then if not, obviously magnesium, vitamin C, um, using products like I love orthomolecular super aloe, things that'll just get that moving because what we're trying to do too, is to move the toxins through, not to just recycle. Right. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great, like this is the reason to eat organic is because that way your body is not accumulating heavy metals that are in our soil, pesticides, things like that. Be smarter with what you're putting on your skin, like use organic products, really move over and, you know, make those gradual changes to make your home um, and the products that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis more organic and natural. Mm -hmm. Definitely take the aluminum out of your uh, deodorant because that Aluminum has a direct effect. Uh, avoid, this is much easier to do now, which is great, but avoid secondhand smoke and that's a lot of cadmium. Uh, as you know, and I think we both agree on this, a lot of people have to start by looking in their mouth. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, the mouth and dental health is so important. And so if you have mercury, if you have infections, things like that, a lot of the culprit comes from the mouth. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Filter your water, um, spend the money. There's really, there's lesser cost filtration systems than there used to be, but you know, filter your water because you don't want that fluoride. You don't want those other contaminants that especially are in city water that will interfere with the function of your thyroid and will lead to, uh, more toxic cells in general. Yeah. And uh, even the, uh, even the EPA is worried about the level of PFAS yeah, right now. I mean, yeah. like very much. So this is a very important thing in that we're, we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg. So I completely agree with you. I mean, just filter your water buy filtered water, make that a priority. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just such a great investment. Uh, also, you know, there are things, Brazil nuts. I'm a big fan of those for the thyroid because they have selenium. Um, actually hot lemon water is great for the thyroid, um, and great for detoxification. Um, and so that's something that's easy to add in, especially lemon water in general, but warm lemon water, especially, uh, celery juice, because it has a lot of nutrients is another thing. Um, I know the medical medium loves it, but there are some great things about celery juice. Uh, and then I also am a big believer in, uh, a lot of the energy things and more cellular energy things that we have out there. Um, the red lights um, in clinic, I use a lot of frequency specific microcurrent, low level cold laser, things like that. But that really helps with the thyroid because of the fact that you can really get those cells to heal and um, rejuvenate with those kind of therapies. And so I think it's a good idea too to invest in a red light and use it at home as often as you can. That one right there. Yeah, oh, there, there's the Jew. There's the Jew right there. Yeah, yeah I totally. How many things we agree on. I have an Instagram page, Dr. Megan Kirschling. Uh, and then you can also find us at www.wanagorahealth.com. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, you too. Bye, Kelly. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for joining me, Dr. Kelly Halderman, on the thyroid series for the Dr. Talks podcast. I hope you found this episode informative and engaging. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on future launches. Don't forget to follow Dr. Talks on social media platforms, including TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram to stay informed about our latest updates and events. For more information on thyroid conditions and other health topics, visit our blog at drtalks.com backslash blog, where you'll find a wealth of in-depth articles and resources to help you manage your health effectively. If you want to learn more about the latest medical breakthroughs or how to prevent, treat, and reverse chronic conditions, sign up for one of our free summits at drtalks.com backslash calendar. You'll find that Dr. Talks Summits features some of the leading health experts in the world, and they're a great way to stay up to date on the latest research and protocols. Thanks again for tuning in. We look forward to bringing you more valuable insights in our next episode. We'll see you next time on the Dr. Talks podcast.